2.3 graph equations of lines. In this comic right here, you want to be singing to this. And if you don't know what that is, I recommend that you go check out the Beatles. What is a family of functions? It's a group of functions with the same characteristics. And the parent function? Is the most basic function in the family. What the heck does that mean? Well, we're going to find out. Here we have a parent function, and it is for the family of all linear functions. And the parent function would be f of x is equal to x. Because again, we want the most basic one. So the most basic line is just y equals x, where we have a slope of 1 and it goes through the point 0, 0. So the y-intercept is 0 and the slope is 1. Right. So that's why we have y equals x. Graph the equation, compare the graph with the graph of y equals x, which is the parent function. So we're doing something to it now. What are we doing? Well, our slope, instead of being 1, is now negative 2. What does that affect? Let's just make a little table here. And let's just start with 0. Well, if x is 0, what do we get for y? Negative 2 times 0 is 0, so we get 0, 0. And let's put in a 1 and a negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. And 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So let's just plot. We have three points. That's good. Negative 1 up 2 and 1 down 2. And a good check when you draw these things, well, we know the slope is negative, so you know the line should be falling from the previous lesson, which it is, so that's good news. And that is a graph of y equals negative 2x. How are we going to graph y equals x minus 1? Well, we can pick a 0 again, and uh, the negative 1 and positive 1 are good points to pick again. So if we put in a 0, we get out a negative 1. And if we put in a 1, we get out a 0. And we put in a negative 1, we get out a negative 2. So let's plot them. So we have negative 1, negative 2. We have 0, negative 1. And then we have 1, 0. That should be a line that's rising because the slope is positive, and it is. All right, and I want you, for homework, to just jot down what you notice about the change in these graphs with the graph of y equals x. I'm going to just draw y equals x dotted on each of these. And you can tell me what you observe, and we'll talk about that in class. That would be y equals x, that dotted line, and this dotted line right here. Would be y equals x. Slope intercept form. We talked about this already. That's just y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Let's graph these equations which are in slope-intercept form. So remember back to this is the y-intercept, negative 3. So that point would be actually... Zero, negative three. Zero, negative graph. three, because that's a y-intercept. So let's plot that. One, two, three. And then our slope is our rise over our run. So we go up one, two, three, four, go over one, two, three. And I always go um, to the right. And so the sign I just always associate with if I go up or if I go down. That's and once you graph your line, make sure... If the slope is positive, it is rising. And let's do this one. What is our y-intercept here? It's plus 3 this time. So our point would be? 0, 3. 0, 3. So 1, 2, 3. And then see, I'm saying I would go down 4 over 3. So I always associate the um, positive or negative with if I go up or down. And I always go over right. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. And again, just always check. There's no reason not to check. If it's a negative slope, my line should be falling, which it is.
value of a copier x years after it was purchased can be modeled by y equals 4,000 minus 600 x. All right, so what is our y-intercept here? Our y-intercept would be when x is 0, in other words, the 4,000. All right, so 4,000, a positive 4,000. So since we're doing this and we want to graph in the number line, why don't we go by thousands? So this would be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. All right, and then what is our slope? Our slope is negative 600. Negative 600. Can I go by different units on this axis? I would. I'd call the y-axis dollars. Okay. And then I'd call the x-axis years. And I could even say, well, this is the dollars in thousands. Mm. And then if I did that, I could have just called this 1, 2, 3, and 4, couldn't I have? Yes. So let's just redo that. So the slope is negative 600, which means that our rate of change is negative $600 per year. So to get there next point, we would just go down 600, which is, you know, this is 1,000, so it's a little more than half, and over 1. Let's graph another point. So we would go down another 600. I'm going to just think that would be like 1,200 down and over two and so connect the dots and that would be about straight so what does the y-intercept represent well the y-intercept which is the four thousand dollars is the purchase price of our copier when it was brand new the purchase price of the copier, because that's how much it cost at year zero, after mm -hmm. zero years. What does the slope represent? The rate of decrease of the value of the copier per year. The rate of decrease of the copier per year because that meant that the value went down $600 per year. That's what that means. It goes down $600 per year. Estimate the value of the copier after five years. So let's actually figure that out. Y after five years is equal to? 4,000 minus, 4, minus 600 times five. Which is equal to? Four, thousand minus three thousand or one thousand one thousand dollars so let's see if that looks about right on our graph one two three four five oh look it looks about right again I didn't do this exact so that looks approximately right mm -hmm. what is standard form of a linear equation that would be in the form ax plus by equals c where a and b are not both zero. Okay. It is easy to identify the blank and blank when the equation is in standard form. Well, let's think about it. What's really obvious if I know that, for example, y is zero, I would have ax equals c. It's really easy to solve for x. Which if is? I knew that that this part was zero, then I would have by equals c, and it would be really easy to solve for y. In other words, it would be really easy to identify my x-intercept and y-intercept. And y-intercept. So let's do that in this question. So if I want to identify the x-intercept, that means that I want to get x all by itself. In other words, I want to get rid of the right? So I would make my y zero. So we have negative 2x minus 3 times 0 equals 6. Negative 2x equals 6. So I have x equals negative 3. 
x equals negative 3 only when y equals 0. I didn't just magically take away the y. I actually solved for a point on the graph, negative 3, 0. We would do our y-intercept in the same kind of way. What happens if we make x equal to 0? Again, the way that you think about it is I want y all by itself, therefore I better get rid of that x. So I have negative 3y equals 6, divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, y equals negative 2. I now have the point 0, negative 2. Let's plot them. 1, 2, 3, 0, and 0 down 2. I have a line that is falling. If I put this in y equals mx plus b, would my slope be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, but I don't see my slope because this is in standard form. Right. All right, graph and identify the slope. Well, when we just have y equals negative 3, what is our slope? Our slope is 0 because y equals anything is always a horizontal line. Because I could have written this as y equals 0x minus 3. I mean, that's redundant, but that's y. All right, and what does a slope of 0 look like? It's a horizontal line. Skier is not going anywhere fast. All right, so let's think about that point. The y is always negative 3. No matter what the x is, the y is always negative 3. X is always 4. No matter what the y is, x is always 1, 2, 3, 4. X is always 4, no matter what the y is. What kind of slope is that? Undefined. Undefined. The skier is dead. All right, let's practice this on our calculator. In order to graph on our calculator, you go to the y equals button. Well, if I'm going to put y equals, I better put these in what kind of form? y equals mx plus b. Slope intercept form. Mm -hmm. So let's do the first one. We have 3x minus y equals 4. Let's get the 3x over on this side. And we have? y equals 3x minus 4. Well, you skipped a step. Negative y equals negative 3x plus 4, and then to get rid of the negative 1 in front of the y, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, y equals 3x minus 4. And then on this one, we have 25y would equal 4x plus 240 plus 240 because we scooted this 240 over on this side and then divide by 25, divide by 25, divide by 25 and we get y equals 4 25ths x plus 48 fifths. All right, so now I'm going to hit the y equals button on my calculator and I put into y1 this one I just put 3 and then I hit the X button, minus 4. On this one, parentheses, I would put in our 4 divided by 25 and the parentheses, X plus 48 divided by 5. And then, so you have to hit the Y1 equals button and then you just hit the graph button in order to graph it. And that's it for this lesson.